Why don't you do the intros this time? Okay. Uh, welcome to the Hoover Sci-Fi Fantasy Fest Star Wars Episode Nine panel. I'm Stan Daniel from Kingdom Casts. Michael Nip, what are you from? <laughs> from I don't know where I'm from, but no, I'm. Uh... <laughs> I am a co-host of the DeuceCast Movie Show. We release a weekly podcast just about uh, movies in general, all genres, uh, not just Star Wars. And then occasionally I host a um, an off-color podcast with Rhett called uh, Card Trader Illuminati. Off-color? It's not foul or anything. <laughs> oh, it's foul in a lot of ways. Oh, it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> And it's offensive Mar- just for good taste, just to yeah. keep good taste. <laughs> and Marie? <laughs> um, I have a Star Wars review blog, the Star Wars Review at blogspot.com, where I review um, all manner of Star Wars books from uh, one to three times a week. And I am a monthly co-host on the Tumbling Saber podcast, um where we talk about star wars books and comics and uh you can find me on twitter at alia morgan excellent and red uh hey i'm just happy to be here honestly <laughs> uh i I'm a, i appreciate this entire event and being able to participate that's just the truth well, oh, now, now you kiss up yeah <laughs> We'll see how I'm you trying to, at the end trying to store some capital uh, that I can burn <laughs> off here in the next few minutes. <laughs> Try to get asked back next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're really going to let you start. Okay, go ahead. I, I guess, so I guess go we ahead. are. Well, here's no, the, go ahead, Rhett. Uh, yeah, so this is a – I think that the nature of this panel and discussion will be a, a, a Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker, uh, mm-hmm. basically a retrospective look at it and, and what we thought of it uh, and what we think that's going to do uh, to the franchise as it, as it moves into the future. Is that fair? Am I, am, is that a uh, – No, that, that's, certainly, that's certainly fair, but I don't think there is a, a – there's not going to be an Episode Ten. Well, no, but, I, but not, certainly not it will have ramifications yeah. to the future of, of the franchise. I don't think it will uh, at all. And I, I think most people um, who know me at all understand that uh, I think the movie was the cinematic uh, equivalent of the coronavirus, uh, where it has it has ruined civilization. Uh, this is our new normal now. We're in a post-Star Wars world where everything about it is That's sullied by this cinematic turd. That is um, not true. Marie. <laughs> that is so, amazing. <laughs> and that is wonderful. <laughs> so, I, you know, it, we won't, I won't do this, but I think in, in almost every single scene of the movie, there's something terribly wrong. Uh, that something you can, and, and some of it's a little nitpicky, but some of it's even more broad where you look at it from a plot standpoint and a contrivance standpoint and a plot hole standpoint and a character uh, 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 you know, uh, what an unreasonable reaction and response standpoint. Uh, well, I think, th- I think it's broken. I think it's totally broken. I think it's a travesty that someone who purportedly would care about the, f- the franchise would put it out for people to absorb. That sounds um, exactly like the Starlog review on the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, this, but, but unfortunately, the panel's not about Empire Strikes Back. It's about the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, oh, I so, assure you. Rhett, Rhett, <laughs> where do you think this fits in the, in the trilogy, in the sequel trilogy? Where, where do you where think Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I mean it, as, it, as far as your enjoyment. If, oh, you rank it ranking yeah, them? I would rank, rank it last. I would rank, rank it last yeah. among okay. among anything the uh, the human uh, the human can uh, can experience in this world. Uh, <laughs> you know, past car accident. Uh, it's, it's worse than that. Uh, uh, being punched in the face. Worse than that. Uh, losing a loved one. This is worse. <laughs> I, I think it's a ter- I think it's a terrible terrible movie. I think it's a terrible movie. <laughs> well, I oh. hope you enjoyed your three minutes there. <laughs> if you'll go ahead and mute him, Kristen, we'll continue. To tell it. Oh. No, no, so that's, no, but no, I, I we all to just, have we all look, have the, the power to of, mute him. Yeah, look, in the interest of full disclosure, I just wanted you to know where I stand on this on this thing. Yeah, tell us how um, you really feel, Rhett. Uh, I I think it's I think it's a travesty. You um, don't even you don't even like Claude. Oh, the is that the slug, from the, the guy from Goldberg's? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, what, what was he on screen for a second and a half? He was. In, in a scene that is nonsense. Okay. 
So what? we go see our spy. What so we makes go, him we, any different than Hammerhead? Uh, no, I'm just saying, no, we're, I, we're or, not talking about him. He just exists yeah. in a scene that shouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Two scenes. Exactly. Two scenes. Uh, well, now he was yeah, supposed to be in. And he's yeah. at the he gets hugged at the end. He does, you're right. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be in another scene that they cut with Snap Wexley also. There was a, uh, yeah. a scene that didn't make it for some reason that yeah. was a well, little whatever. bit. Whatever. There's a lot cut related. out of this movie. Why, why does yeah. that? Why does that bother you when the, the entire what, what, uh, prequel, what, what, what the originals, me? they're replete with oh, just he random doesn't like the prequels. There. There. No, 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 no. I'm no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not calling Claude out uh, in and of himself. It's a it's a dumb name, obviously, for a slug. Um, <laughs> uh, but but really? the what? scene. Give me, but give the me scene. some good no, names no, first. No, 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 no. Uh, but th that scene. <laughs> so in that scene, what happens in that scene? We get our spy, right? We mm, go visit right. our. We get word that there's a spy in the first order. Uh, what information did they did they gain? Anybody remember what information they got from this? I've, uh, I've this purged spy? the movie from my mind. I don't like it either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They they heard that Palpatine was back, which they already knew because of the communication. They and didn't, they got, and they they didn't officially know it. It was confirmed by the yeah. spy. Well, that yeah, was because, because that that, it was threat. information that was useless. It was. A, they only was got a, that communication if they were playing Fortnite, though. Mm. Right, right, oh, yeah. God. That's it's another great uh, place to introduce a major plot point, a major retcon of forty years of lore. Uh, let's drop it in Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> How is it a retcon? Yeah. Because Palpatine was dead. Palpatine died. No, no one's ever Nobody's really gone. Nobody's ever really gone. Nobody's ever really gone. Nobody's yeah, he's a, he, gone. That's right. Marie's correct. Yeah, that's okay. The clone. It, the clone. You, the, that clone talk is nonsense also. Okay, let's stop right there real quick. You cannot tell me that the man that lived for what we know practically his entire life plotting to take over the Republic and turn it into the Empire, working his way through the legal system and through the government, uh, through the Senate, all of those years, this man who has infinite patience and the ability to fool Jedi when they set across the desk in front of him, as well as a plan for a Death Star and a backup Death Star, did not have a plan for possible failure in Return of yeah, the Jedi. We, we can assume that because it's very clear from the events of the original trilogy that the intent of that creator was that he perished. The it entirety of the, hang on. That story arc was built around the redemption of Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, and he killed Palpatine and gained his redemption in that moment. And then we, we retroactively go back and we have three more movies that tell even more of that story. That was the re, I mean, uh, that was the intent. Okay, that was a done story. That was the the Anakin redemption arc. When you bring him back senselessly from the dead because you because ryan johnson screwed up your villain in the last movie th that it that undoes that arc that Not diminishes at all. yeah no, oh no, yeah Vader it, still it absolutely ended the empire. it absolutely diminishes the impact of our of our favorite characters, of our original yeah. trilogy characters. No, what not they at did all. what they did was fail. They failed to defeat the Emperor. They failed to undo the Empire. It's back in another, just a different name. And that's, uh, I, I don't, I don't he like continued, that. He continued his master plan in a different way after the defeat at the second Death Star. It didn't discount anything Vader slash Anakin did because right. he was still the catalyst for the fall of the Empire. And more importantly, that's a personal situation between him and Luke going on there as much as it was tossing Palpatine over I mean, that, the edge. This is like this is like but wearing also, a, this is like wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Nobody convinces anybody that they're the dumb ones. Um uh, <laughs> So, but you're going to give it your best shot, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that mean. I did, you know, I'm playing. Um, uh, oh, uh, let's. Okay, so he's back. He's back through whatever, whatever idiotic story leaps we have to make. Uh, you buy the rest so he's of back the as a clone. but you don't buy that aspect. 
you don't buy that, that he could pull that off. I don't. I, well, I, I, but first of all, I don't think it was the uh, the original intent of the story. Well, that's uh, uh, that. The problem is we're never going to know that, though. We're never oh, going to know that. Uh, no, George Lucas I mean, will, will be glad to tell you that 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 was not the original intent. Well, of that right. Story. George would, but he he's uh, contractually obligated not to say anything like oh, that. Oh, he has said it. I mean, I'm quite sure I've, uh, I've, I've seen I mean, him allude to it. Not, but no, not, okay, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, I, you guys aren't going to be convinced that that's a, that's a dumb idea. That's no, fine. no, no. I'm not uh, saying it's not a dumb uh, idea. I'm just saying. We'll never know what the true intent right, okay. was. Really. All right, so he's back. So as a clone, why does he look? Why, why does it look like that? What? Because why wouldn't the clone have, have been yes. in a little bit better shape? Marinos. So Listen. the mm -hmm. reason why he's falling apart essentially is because his power is way too great to be contained in a clone body. That dark said, side power that? is rotting That's the in a DK body book. from the inside out. In a DK book. That, DK book. That was they, they touched on that in the novelization. Was that the novelization? In the yeah. novelization. Yeah, yeah, it was in the novel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and I mean, and I got to know how you, you feel about those, Rhett. So we don't need to now, go back there. What about his son? Now he cloned his. The, his was, son was a clone, right? That guy, yeah. that guy looked like he was in pretty good shape. Why couldn't that he? Was, why couldn't he inhabit that one? So that was a clone that was genetically incapable of force powers righty it was a bad clone there's an yeah. entire series coming up about yeah that's right clones that are genetically not quite right called that skip a generation is that uh, that force ability he passed on to uh, to ray i guess it skips a generation like uh, like my grandma thought diabetes it, did it could <laughs> very well <laughs> Ah, you won't get it. I've got the I've got the sugars, but you'll be fine, honey. Okay. <laughs> the sugars. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so you you guys are not not conceding any of the reasonable points there. Um, no, no, but with well, the. <laughs> <laughs> the cloning we we know that the cloning is not perfect we know that that yeah. whole concept is not i know but it just looked like it's that you know come on uh it, it looks like his damaged body it, got dredged up out of the out of the dr mm -hmm. death star debris and put on a and put on a mechanical arm okay? i have a non-confrontational question for both michael and rep because i know i'm going to assume uh with marie because uh -huh. we both do like the film but the question is this, when I sat in uh, Rise of Skywalker in the theater, mm -hmm. I'd went in with lowered expectations, largely due to somebody that kept private messaging me on Facebook. Um, <laughs> I was telling you, yeah, and I was right about all of it too. <laughs> no, no, and, and so I was thrilled to death with the film. But when you see Palpatine in that state with all of the mechanics attached to his back, rotting the fingers, falling away his you know his blindness and all Rhett michael did it not occur to you that whatever vessel whether it was clone or otherwise that the body was using that palpatine's power was too much for it but transference was not taking well no because because, the, because the garbage script, no because right? the garbage script didn't say that you see i didn't need that sitting there the moment i saw you him do. i thought you i do. just instantly knew what you was going on you do need an on. explanation when you bring that uh, that I mean, scale of a character back from the dead that's been dead for 40 years you need to explain how he got there okay Apparently that's you didn't basic see Jaws too. that's basic oh my lord <laughs> <laughs> that is not, i mean do you need did I, mean, you I don't need think that's the example you want this to use. is the this is our well i'm I, i'm going to say arguably but to me it's inarguable <laughs> this is the greatest movie villain to come down the pike vader is more complicated than a movie villain but palpatine I mean, he really, just really hammed is. It up. I mean, to what end? I mean, uh, he had a to purpose the in the original. He had a person. He had a reason in the original movies. Uh, he he wanted he wanted power. He wanted to control the galaxy. It never he changed. Didn't, he didn't randomly. You know, his when he was blowing planets up, it had a point. There was a purpose to he it. He had a far better shot at controlling the galaxy in nine than he did in six. Uh, yeah, because of the absolute contrivance of these thousands of, of star destroyers that, that come out of thin air okay, okay. let me ask you this red uh, you you know that isis exists right the terrorist I do, group. Uh, yeah yeah okay have you ever met anybody from it have I you ever met a group so, of them yeah. from it <laughs> yeah probably so and all that do you ever wonder where their weapons come from 
how they get their weapons, how they amass them. Right, well, uh, you're okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What you just said would make sense if they took over the planet. Okay, ISIS cannot take over the Earth. Okay, so so comparing that. The that's cis rule Exegol. I mean, Damn. and they had thirty years. Man, they had thirty hurt. years. Yeah. And he had he had an active plan separate from what he was doing on Exegol, forming in the first order. I mean, this is completely reasonable for the character oh of Sheev Palpatine. Not, nothing about this movie is reasonable contextually with anything that has come star. that has happened in this in the in the star wars story today okay all right look, look we're just going to argue about that point let's move on to another idiocy uh, uh of i the accept movie. your concession we'll move on that is not what that was <laughs> uh, so here's another issue and we got a little bit a little taste of this in in uh uh what's that what's that terrible one uh that's better now in comparison uh last jedi um so we had a couple of things happen in Last Jedi. Uh, these stupid DK books, these canon books, you know, they have star maps. They've got maps of the Star Wars galaxy, right? Uh, uh, where Crate to uh, Canto Bight, those that was a that was quite a distance. Okay, they traveled that very rapidly. If we can, we just say that they, you know, when Finn went on that mission, that was a very quick trip. Okay, and I'm I'm building to something here. Uh, then in the uh, uh the last uh the last skywalker whatever it is uh what's the name of this movie rise of, rise of skywalker, skywalker. <laughs> rise um, of skywalker. Brett, the more upset you get hang the on more i know i'm just making me crazy uh, oh yeah i'm oh, sorry <laughs> Thank yeah, i'm just gesticulating and it shifts everything around um <laughs> so we start with this light speed skipping they bounce to four different places instantly instantly Mm -hmm. That's the okay. Millennium Falcon, though. Yeah, that's the Millennium Falcon. The, yeah, they can make ha it can make point five past light speed, but it's not it's not instantaneous travel. From At one this spot point, to I'm the convinced other. what it has done, what do that does, anything. is it makes the galaxy very small. There are it mm -hmm. takes tension away because you can now instantaneously travel anywhere. All these trips that everybody took back and forth. Remember, the clock was ticking. It was only sixteen hours. They're gallivanting all over the galaxy. So I think this light speed skipping thing is major plot hole it undoes much of we the established rules of the uh, of the galaxy okay they jumped out of a ga of a gravity well can't do it they did it without any real uh, astromech uh, calculations uh, and those tie fighters followed them instantly through hyperspace nobody has a problem with that nobody thinks that that's a, an important retcon and undoing of world established rules I don't well, have a problem with it at all because, because they cool. locked on it in episode eight. They explained how they were doing it. And and a year later, they've miniaturized it. And now every TIE fighter comes. comes uh, they don't have to necessarily miniaturize it. Depending okay. on the, the depending on the distance, assuming that there is one of the major uh, first order ship. And this is not, it doesn't say this in canon, but this is just a simple no prize solution to it where if you care enough about what you're watching and all you can you can justify it in a reasonable way so assuming that you've got a major star destroyer from the first order in almost every region of known space it could still be transmitting to the smaller tie fighters they could still hey, take i mean the computer tech if you look at r2d2 and c3po Look, the onboard computer tech, it's not too far off. You Man, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that there are scenes in this movie that do not make sense in world because they look cool. And I think that's a I think that's a, that diminishes the value of the franchise. It talks down to the fan to a fan base that has stuck with it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't have been subjected to that. Okay. Remember how cool we should that have gotten a better movie out of coming out of the yeah. asteroid was able Empire to breathe in space. Back? Yeah, that happens all the time on Earth, doesn't it? No, no, we're not you talking about. We're talking about. I'm not talking terms. about. I'm not talking about. We don't have rules for hyperspace you keep on saying Earth, Stan, in world terms, We don't you do keep it. Trying to apply it to this. That world. You can't apply it to that. Rules also, in that the hyperspace world. skipping is no more ridiculous than the Millennium Falcon at Sublight making it to Bespin from their location in what? Maybe three days. Where were they? Well, you know where they were. They were over there to the left of Bespin. And up uh, the, okay. Up the thing there. Okay. Uh, 
uh, again, given uh, where the asteroid this field is, is you can... talk, uh, yeah. and I don't know what I don't know how to uh, I don't know what to say about it. Uh, the, it's a terrible <laughs> screenplay. There are no consequences. Everything that happens is immediately undone. Chewie dead? No, he's not. C-3PO's wife? No, he's not. Uh, oh, uh, she, was uh, never oh, he, dead. he's he's stabbed. Oh my gosh! The it was a misdirect. I mean, it was a misdirect. They were film, standing. It's... They were standing thirty feet apart. Number one, <laughs> they were on a hill, looking, overlooking it, and they can't see that they're. That was, was contrived what was Han when garbage. When they put him in the carbonite, I mean, everything what? they're complaining about, we can go back to the original Sorry. trilogy and apply there as well. Only if we're crazy people can we do that. Only if we're crazy, because you like the original trilogy because it's got the golden boy. And Who's instead, that? we're stuck with this girl in the sequel. Oh no! Uh, don't make some sex. Don't, don't make this some sexist nonsense. I don't give a rip about Ray one way or the other. I think she's exactly, <laughs> but you do about Luke. I don't. I don't give her. I, I think she's an overpowered character. No matter what sex they apply, Luke those is an overpowered capabilities character. To. We completely and totally bought Luke. I mean, yeah, he was a Luke he was got a, his. He Luke was driving whipped. a land speeder, and suddenly he's qualified to be in an X-Wing. Not only qualified, we're going to throw him at the Death Star. I mean, that's the equivalent of grabbing some kid that had a flight simulator oh, on I don't his think it laptop, is. I think most everybody can fly in that him, Slapping him into a state-of-the-art uh, fighter jet and sending him up against the entirety of the Chinese military. It, it's not, we He's bought it because it's fantasy. We this is, a, this is a non sequitur that's Jesus literally taken me out of the, off the planet. I can't because follow this anymore Luke, at all. Because Luke is the same situation as Ray. He's not. Luke oh, how is repeatedly, he not? well, first he got his, his butt handed to him by saying people right off the bat, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, lost that fight, lost to Vader big time. Uh, was dismembered by him. All right. Uh, uh, look, so, you know, he he was never this all powerful character. Ray didn't get taken out by Kylo, trapped nope, on board she the didn't. Star No, Destroyer. she didn't. Hmm? Uh, she beat him. She beat him at least. She beat the crap out of him once. Her first time to ever the, hold a lightsaber. At the end, and large at the end of also he was injured severely. Yeah. Gosh. Well, Ray, I mean, well, Ray shot him. You know. I mean, Ray's grandfather is Palpatine, after all. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, that's a good point, Michael. You make a great point. I mean, I mean she, you know, it explains a lot, right? It does. I wonder it, she's got so much power. Palpatine was the most powerful in being. command of the, or yeah, apparently he uh, is also he was probably he was also the best strategist there. I mean, clearly, we've gone over this before. Yoda sitting across the desk from him, Mace Windu sitting across the desk from him. At no time do they have a clue that they are sitting across the greatest evil they've know, yeah. faced in their lifetimes. A little bit of a plot hole there, I think, too. Exactly. Yes, Brandon, he could come back to life 40 years later. That, that That's completely feasible in that universe. No one's ever really gone. Nobody Oh, is my goodness. No. <laughs> no. Okay, now that we've cleared up that... Yeah, well, know, none of it's clear. I mean, I, Brett, you just, really you've decided, you've decided it. that it's, a, that it's a, a holy and blameless entity from God that cannot be criticized in any way, uh, and that Chris Terrio is not only deserves oh. that, that Oscar for mm. Argo, but should be given one for this crap fest. I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to argue against those points because that's, I, like, I, a, it, that's well, like a crazy thing. No, I, I have a problem with the Diane Keaton film getting the Oscar over the original Star Wars, but you know that that's a completely different situation. Um, Rhett, what else would you like to complain about? Well, I this? mean, I just I just my point simply is that I th I th think it's a terrible movie, L devoid of consequence, uh, driven by plot contrivances and one MacGuffin after the other. It's a fetch quest. Uh, of a movie uh, where the the MacGuffins don't really make sense in the world that they exist. They don't. They don't make sense that Again, they exist at all. Again, everything you're saying, we can take it and we can put it with the original trilogy. But we're not discussing the original trilogy. We're talking oh, about whether or not this convenient? one is garbage or not, and it is. Isn't it that convenient? I didn't think it was garbage at How all. How is it convenient? Marie, this is the name of the. I thought this film was absolutely incredible. Holy Lord. And I saw it <laughs> in theaters. <laughs> I saw it in theaters four times. I saw it three times. What? 
I saw it twice opening night. Yeah, yeah. He hated well, it so thank much. You. He couldn't wait to give more money. Thank you I for saw giving it, I saw it more twice. money. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, I want Star Wars to exist. I love Star Wars. He's got, the, he's got the $250 Blu-ray with it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I haven't, he's got the, I haven't seen he's it He's got since. the Ray statue from, you know, uh, Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> but he hates this movie. I do hate the movie. Oh, my goodness. I, I personally thought it had great humor, great heart. Um, the When Palpatine was revealed to be Ray's grandfather, I immediately went, ah! I was well, I, I, I so made that noise. excited. I made a similar noise. It made, it made more sense than her being in any way connected to the Skywalkers. And that's yeah. all we speculated on for the first two films, seven and eight. She's got to be connected to the Skywalkers. We all expected that. The, the problem a lot of people had with eight was they gave you something that was completely unexpected and quality and good. But people just, it, you know, no, 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 I don't like this. The same thing happened with the prequels. I recall over and over again having discussions similar to this about people with the prequels. People who now swear by the prequels. Well, None of them are on this panel. It's all relative. None it's of them are relative. on this panel. But now the same people that just curse George Lucas ruined my childhood. It's hmm. always somebody else's fault who's not there caretaking mm -hmm. the Star Wars franchise at the time. But then, you know, 10 years later, oh, yeah, love the prequels. Jar Jar number one, you know, can't. Uh, well, I don't think anybody, no, it's all relative. Like, I, I mean, when you. Join, you, join my Watto hey, podcast. Hey, those, those prequels are, are not good movies. And nobody has come out of the woodwork to, to demand they get their recognition. Okay. That, that's, uh, that's something that you guys pretend happens, uh, but that is not, that doesn't exist. Those people don't happen. The prequels, I, uh, I don't really exist. Really you think the prequels, you thought the prequels were crap, and now you think they're great. No, I always That's what he's talking about. The, right. Yeah, yeah, no, right. he's talking about those, those, those people. people oh, those okay, people no. exist. No, 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 those people very much exist. I mean, uh, they, and you can ask across. I've seen it on Twitter. I mean, I've seen people, well, I guess, look, they certainly do exist. I, I've seen, I, I know there are people who eat batteries. I'll go uh, back even further than that. <laughs> I never knew that anybody <laughs> eat batteries. <laughs> I never and they're knew, rightfully locked away. <laughs> I never knew that anybody in the world, I had never heard one bad word against the damn Ewoks in my life until the invention of the internet. Right, right. I, nobody hated the yeah, Ewoks. Eight, eight year olds And then one I was person eight. gets, yeah, and it, it gets uh, <sighs> eating, uh, teddy bears. This was ridiculous. No, it was an enjoyable film. And 10 years from now, you're going to have an entire generation that grew up with Ray and Finn. And I don't po, think you're going to have that and generation. That's their Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I sure No, you I are. mean, uh, there, there are certainly a lot of. There are certainly a lot of people that like Ray. Google I mean, the videos from uh, Galaxy's Edge. Watch those little girls dressed as Ray when they interact with her and Chewbacca. Yeah, I've seen all that. Those children, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, look, there's right an exception there. to every rule, but you're talking about, uh, I mean, you can look at merchandise sales and everything else to say that this generation has not connected with the Star Wars movies. Well, I don't think this generation buys action figures anyways. I mean, no, I don't, well, there's it. not any now, other all, product all either. All the action figures, they're trying desperately to save G.I. Joe, which is an action figure yeah, franchise. It, action figures, and we were discussing this before the panel started, up. there is no doubt that action figures and current toys are made for mostly males over the age of 30. And that market is dwindling. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's no, dwindling rapidly. Fair. It's nice to have a few, you know, a few things like this Black Series action figure or whatever you're into from Star Wars, G.I. Joe, what have you. But that market's gone because these kids don't play with toys in the traditional way that we did growing up. And there's not yeah. the appeal there. Where they well, are getting their appear, appeal is over the videos, over the uh, over the books, over the novels, over the video games, and such like that, uh, and the interaction that they get with them, it's a it's a much more hands on sort of situation where they'd rather role play than act out with the action figures. Marie, you mentioned humor in the movie. Uh, oh yeah, I actually was absolutely delighted by almost everything C three PO said. Oh, you said something positive about the yeah. movie. 
I'm best, yeah, because I'm a reasonable person that I'm not an apologist for it, uh, for <laughs> one way or the other. I'm not whatever the opposite of an apologist is. Um, uh, that I mean, I thought he for the very first time, really, in any of the nine movies, C-3PO was not horrible. Right. Yeah. No, he was very good in this movie. That's yeah, the, I, that's I mean, I laughed right audibly spot. at a couple of uh, at a couple of lines. I thought he, oh, that, I thought he did great. That that's scene awesome. where he's giving the whole history of the you know the festival going on, and all of them turn around to look at him, and he's standing there, and he looks behind himself. I mean, the yeah, and colorful yeah. kites. Yes. <laughs> I think I think for for me, like one of the things that frustrated me the most is there was not much payoff from anything that happened in episode eight to episode nine. Um, and even, you know, the, the through line, even from episode seven to episode nine, I mean, the, the Knights of Ren were the biggest disappointment on the face of the earth. I mean, they were billed to be these bad A characters and we see them for maybe 10 minutes on screen in episode nine. I, remember I know with, remember I, when they captured Chewbacca, he, who, Chewbacca, who was carrying a very powerful ranged weapon uh, <laughs> and they captured, two of them captured him with their melee weapons. <laughs> right. Oh, what a what a miscalculation! Man, that's easy if by, they uh, sneak up behind you. I mean, you know, uh, Chewie's not the be all and end all. Chewie's more concerned with Ray out there. But uh, it was thirty I, feet. I, I agree with Michael. It was thirty feet from that ship. I I agree with Michael that the Knights of Ren could have. Yeah, yeah, I wanted more of the Knights of Ren. But the analogy here is just like Boba Fett. You know, you you didn't really get much of Boba Fett and Empire or Return of the Jedi, but that's who everybody focused on. Yeah, Same but not, that's not happening. We, that's not happening with the Knights of Ren, though. There's yeah, nobody. There's gone. nobody that cares about the Knights of Ren. Yeah, they're well, not after. Yeah, not after not what happened. Yeah, not after we didn't build on it in number. Yeah, eight. exactly. But it's okay. They're just there. It's okay for them to also be there. Has background story. Just something intimidating. Somebody to have to beat at the end that does not, you know, it, that is not directly descended from anybody else involved in anything, that there's something like Ganja Club. You know, it, it exists out there. We don't need to know anything more about it. It's a criminal organization. And, you know, they wanted Han Solo dead or, or Han Solo owned the money. That's all we needed to know. And I the mean, same thing, it, you know, although Jabba the Hutt got his day in Return of the Jedi, I mean, it could have just as easily went the same way with Jabba the Hutt just casually being mentioned through two films. I mean, but we did get to, to get to see Ben Solo have a moment of coolness with the Knights of Ren when he sort of did that little shrug. That was a neat thing to see, but they weren't a threat. And to well, him at all. I the mean, in fact, he been... in, in another instance of disappearing weapon, like we saw in the uh, uh, throne room fight in uh, uh, Last Jedi, he was carrying a blaster, and then when the Knights of Ren showed up, he simply didn't have it anymore. Would have would have been nice to have, for him to have just continued to hold. Did it. Did he not make a tremendous jump and lose the blaster in the uh, jump? after that? He had the blaster after that. He did. Yeah. It was also, that. anybody know what uh, the last bit of dialogue from? Uh, Ben Solo is. Ouch. Ow. He said ow. And that was his ow. last. Uh, no, it hurt. You have to say anything. The scene itself it hurt that whatever happened to him, out. it hurt. So he said ow. Yeah. He planned on that big old chain. It hurt. But I, would, I don't blame him for saying it. I just, uh, that's how our, that's how our beloved uh, Ben went out. So I wanted to bring up something um, that, so I have, as I said, during the Last Jedi panel last year, um, I have cultivated a Twitter that is very friendly to all Star Wars. And the last, and it includes lots of Last Jedi fans. Well, when I got on Twitter, after Rise of Skywalker came out, suddenly I was a sexist for liking Rise of, Rise of Skywalker. Um, I was a fanboy, a fanboy, um, like not me particularly, but like anyone who liked Rise of mm -hmm. Skywalker mm -hmm. were all these things. They were, they were not real Star Wars fans. And that blew my mind. Yeah, it's interesting how the tables turned because all of those people that were such apologists <laughs> for the Rise of Skywalker and Ryan Johnson, or I mean, uh, Last, Last Jedi. Jedi, Ryan Johnson lovers, they turned on Rise of Skywalker pretty quick, didn't they? I mean, yeah, like I felt attacked I on Twitter. <laughs> you're it, very rare. You're a rare breed. It, it all, I mean, okay, it all works in context. I tried my best with episode eight 
primarily because of this guy. And yeah, it, it, uh, I went back, I watched it. I've watched it. I've seen episode eight. Oh, I'm pointing at Rhett. Where I'm, no, no, I'm, on, I'm on the other side. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. For me, yeah. Rhett's like. I apologize. Yeah, I'm on the other side. I'm on the other side. <laughs> yeah. So we're all seeing something different. But uh, I, I watched it. I, 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 other than other than the uh, original three, I bet I've seen episode eight far more and maybe even more at this point than uh, Jedi than I have any other because I was trying to I was trying to go into it and look at it and okay Stan they they don't like it and they're serious Star Wars fans and you know it I, I couldn't do it I can't it, do it with Rise of Skywalker it, I've done the same thing with Rise of is Skywalker. Is it possible is it possible get, Stan that your your makeup is such that you simply are totally incapable of saying anything negative about any aspect of Star Wars ever no matter what. No, I can quickly say some negative things uh about a few things in it, but I'm not going to diss I I'm not going to go in and focus on this area. Look, I do agree. I agree about the Knights of Ren. I I agree a couple of things what I've liked I would have liked to have seen the ghost images of the Jedi show up at the end in the big climax. Yeah. I would have really liked to have seen that, but I'm not upset that I didn't get it. What they did give me, it played into the narrative that JJ was setting up there. I, I liked it. I accepted it. Hey, I've always, I never looked at it as with the prequels or with any of it when they were saying, George Lucas has done horrible things to my childhood. I never looked at it like that. I looked at it like it's his damn sandbox and I never, ever thought I was going to get three more Star Wars films after the originals. And he let us come back into his sandbox to play for a time. And, and I'm not just going to accept anything that they hand down. I had, I, I had, when I came out of Phantom Menace, I liked it. And at the same time, I didn't like it. But the more I watched it, and in context of the other two movies that follow it, and the older I get, yeah, I really, really do appreciate The Phantom Menace. It has its problems. I mean, you know, uh, poor little Jake Lloyd there doing his wooden best. Um, but, and, you know, we can go back and forth on Jar Jar. Sometimes he's funny, sometimes I mean, I, he's you, not. I mean, you just said that you were, you like it, you, you're so excited just to have more. I mean, I, the, my approach to that is it's like you eat the last piece of pie I'm ex and you're I'd like, wow, there's no more pie. And then somebody brings you the pie, that chocolate pie from the help. I, and you're like, well, I this would, is now, there's more pie, but this pie is, is I made out of I would be excited to have more Star Trek. <laughs> I would be excited to have more Star Trek as well, except they fixed me with that. They fixed me with that real straightforward. This, these are people that work on Star Wars. They do, J.J. Abrams, uh, Daisy Ridley tweeted it out when she was receiving hate. She said, I don't understand any of this. We made these films with love. I don't doubt well, that for I, that a second. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it's Abrams quality. His love well. is minute, quality. If you look over at Picard, what you see them is dragging an 80-year-old mm -hmm. man out to try to wring the last few dollars from a franchise that none of them understand how he, to handle. He wants yeah, to do that show, They want though. money. I mean, it's not like he's... No, not, I, and I'm all for him doing it, but I'm just yeah. <laughs> being a little over melodramatic. I'm fine with Patrick Stewart getting a check for that. Don't get me wrong. But at Star Wars, yeah, they want money. This is the point of Star Wars, but everybody involved in it actually cares how it goes on. Every of the, one of the directors, every one of the actors, and on down the line. And where they get disenfranchised is like, what happened to poor Rose Tico? Yeah, you know, and, and they and no, they they want to do this. They want to project that. They want people to love what they do with their time in this franchise. And you were dear talking God, about I can't. You're I talking can't about pure imagine. emotion. You're talking about emotion instead of whether or not this script is quality and the worthy script of is the product. Quality. We talked about that earlier. You lost. Now we're oh, moving no. on That's to the other aspect. What that was. <laughs> I mean, between Marie and I, we pretty much just kind of. No, that's. But now we're talking about the overall. I mean, I, feel I mean of I, the listen, I, if you if you can't discuss a screenplay, the merits of a screenplay, in, intellectually, I don't know what I don't even know what else to say. 
Well, I, we did like that. I, I you know, ranted and you no, that's, ranted that's and you what, raved about how much that was. I mean, there are you put all of your are, emotion uh, into no tension, how you hated this. There is no tension and how it's, in this movie. Everything that happens is immediately undone. Every every step that the characters take is is just hit over the uh, over their head with these MacGuffins it, and these plot it, contrivances. It may be that your tastes have developed things. away from Star Wars, in I, which I, case. I understand this, this, there's I mean, a great this, this following taste. for Stargate out there. Man. <laughs> They're looking for fans. <laughs> well, they are. And I, well, and I, here, here's, the, here's the problem. You're going to have Star Wars looking for fans, too, because you're diminishing the effect, the, 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 the real impact of what this movie has done to the franchise. I, it I'm is, not diminishing. It, is, Let it me has, share in this fact, buried this franchise in this no. uh, from you a see, that's, standpoint. No. No, 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 no. that's no. emotional oh, yeah. but let me uh, let me okay. share this uh, nobody the, on this the numbers panel is have in... trended way off a cliff with these movies wait a minute wait a minute wait, no they haven't oh, let me yes, wait have. wait just a second that wait movie second. made half of what the force awakens made let me that's uh, well so wait. return of the jedi made half of what Star Wars may. Right. Yeah, that's but a let bad, me, before we get argument. off something, bad argument, right? let that. me share, let me share something right here. As much as we argue about this, I've no doubt that, you know, Michael and Red are going, if we're going to continue on and talk about this or that or whatever's going on with Ray Parks has friends. But let me share something oh, yeah, with no, you. I'm, 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 I'm hollered at you, but I let I, it. Yeah. I had a friend. Exactly. I had a friend, and after I closed the store, we'd go to lunch and all that. He'd come in the store. We, he was a big Star Wars fan, but he didn't like Episode Eight, and uh, he he tried Episode Eight. And we're not talking. We're talking about somebody who was an exec. Yeah, you know, we're talking about somebody that had his stuff together. And I, I really valued his friendship. I really and truly did. Um, he hey, he knew quick. there was a lot of difficulties aside from you know, anything else we start uh, in my personal life going on at the time. And then he, he texted me after rise of Skywalker mm -hmm. and he said, I saw it. What did you think? I treaded very carefully with him. Unlike I do with Rhett. Okay. I, I'm, I'm being serious there because I know Rhett and I can go back and forth. I traded very carefully with him. And I said, honestly, I very much enjoyed it. I've seen it twice now. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really quite good. He texted me back and I've had a relationship with this individual for six, seven years. He texted me back and he said, I can't, I clearly cannot trust your judgment anymore. This is an issue. I cannot call you a friend. I have not heard from him since. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to write you a check to write me a screenplay for sure. But, so, uh, yeah. uh, but I'll still be your friend. Well, hey, one, well, one real mean, quick correction I want to make. Yeah. Uh, Return of the Jedi made 81 percent of the gross of A New Hope. Okay, not 50. 81 percent. So it, are, are we talking the initial gross or with lifetime gross? Yeah, lifetime's lifetime. tough. Lifetime's tough. Well, we're not at the lifetime yet. We're a year. We're not even a year out yet, are we? No, it came out in. I mean, lifetime is however much yeah. a movie makes <laughs> well, in no, the period but, that it exists. That it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, no, well, we I guess the, my my question is: Is that counting re-releases? I, I mean, all that are you stuff? you going to yeah, say? No. Uh, what, I'm not. I'm giving it forty years and we'll discuss it again. I, no, I'm comparing two <laughs> movies from forty years ago. Listen, I'm just saying you you said the drop off from a new hope to return of the Jedi was the same as from the force awakens to rise of Skywalker. I'm saying, okay, yeah, not. let's go. That let's go 50 back. Percent drop. This okay. If we're going to do a fair no, comparison, well, you if have we're to do a fair admit, comparison, though, get the numbers from one year of return of the Jedi's first year release as opposed to new. Hope's do you think release. rise of Skywalker is going to continue to roll up big? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. They're going to kind of keep going that with No, of course yeah. not. But no, um, like keep building. Yes. But, but you have to admit though, the force awakens was quite an anomaly when it comes to box office. I think even yeah. Disney was surprised by the 2 oh, billion yeah. worldwide. I mean, it, it, it I don't think anybody thought that that movie would make that much. Um, and the thing with the force awakens is it's milk toast. I mean, there's not, there's Holy nothing goodness. that happens in JJ that movie. Special. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's well, well in the sense that there's no stakes really. I mean, it's just one of those, it's an action flick and gin pop eats that up. And so it did well. I mean, but when you introduce the, you know, last Jedi and actually have, 
some some stuff that makes people um, want have to actually think a little bit, then that's when the box off, and then that led to the failing box office of Rise of Skywalker. I mean, Tommy was, uh, Iger yeah. Iger said he was taking personal responsibility over mandating one Star Wars movie a year, and that that was on him for putting that pressure on Lucasfilm to do it. Iger did not say it in the context of I'm coming in to take you know everything over. Iger's got bigger fish to fry right now. It, yeah. This this idea that, oh, there was some sort of Star Wars fatigue and that's what the issue was is overlooking the fact that those movies were not very good and that if they had been good, people would have continued to see them. Marvel did can release like three Solo? movies. Yeah, it's... Wow. Yeah. Oh no, Solo's good. It's Solo not good. good. It's not yeah, good. Solo's it's good. nothing. It's 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 a it's forgettable. Okay, oh. there's no reason. It's not even forgettable. I just watched that the other night. It's I, forgettable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, you remember it because you saw it the other night. Okay, I, I saw it a, a year ago, and it, and I can't remember. It. I wasn't like scrolling along saying, "Oh, what is the Solo on Disney Plus?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I, yeah, think... I mean, MCU make it can drop three movies in a year, and they, and they all make a ton, and nobody talks about Marvel fatigue. Uh, but that was our excuse because we can't admit the the diminishing quality of the product. So we concoct uh, this theory. Oh, well, they just came out too quickly. Well, now Red will even learned the lesson not to. But release Red does have a point. I mean, each other. Red does have a point because within the Star Wars universe, in general, when you release such good product like Rogue One and The Mandalorian. No and the and show that to the the general public and then you release something like the the last jedi and rise of skywalker that honestly also just, high quality product well yeah but it's split <laughs> fandom it's not even close it to the split. quality of mandalorian which everybody loves everybody and loves rogue it one, uh, and rogue, rogue, one, rogue, one, uh, rogue one everybody to loves be my favorite star wars movie yeah everybody it's loves rogue one yeah. Wow, that's some common yeah. ground. Yeah, I, I love Rogue One. I also watched that the right after I watched Solo too. And and I look, love, and that's and look, yeah. Steve uh, three PO just chimed in. He says I'll watch Rogue One three times for every time I watch Solo or The Rise of Skywalker. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a vast gulf well, you need to between catch up. those you movies. You need to catch up the numbers with Solo and Rise of Skywalker, Steve. We'll wait here. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I'm I'm embarrassed. I'm sad to say that the very last movie I saw in the cinema was The Rise of Skywalker, yeah. and I'm worried that we'll never go I back to it, normal, and that'll be the my last cinema experience. That'll be it. You're, you're I done think that for. Was, yeah, I think that was the last thing. <laughs> Yeah. It seems like there was something uh, else. I, but I, I clearly see more movies than you guys. I'd do. rather see The Curse of La Llorona again <laughs> than ever sit through The Rise oh, of no, Skywalker. I had, to, I had to review something, and I can't remember what it was now. Well, there you go. There's a prime example of seeing something and not remembering. <laughs> and I mean, I even went on TV and talked about it and don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that once The Last Jedi came out, that franchise was basically in trouble because the themes that are explored in the last jedi are so far from what force awakens was that it's like you weren't watching a trilogy any longer yeah because at least very at le disjointed at, trilogy at least I'll with empire that. at least with empire and even attack of the clones it's obviously the middle of a trilogy it's all tell it's telling one story it felt what one vision um, yeah. the, the sequel trilogy is not one vision. It's not one vision. Episode eight felt different to me than episode nine, but Empire Strikes Back definitely feels different than no, Return of the I, Jedi. No, I don't but think you, so. I think they you know, all fit. Oh, I missed the Ewoks in Empire Strikes Back singing while Luke was getting his hand cut off. I, I, I mean, it was a it, Empire was we had a musical. Dark we had movie. musical interludes in A New Hope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Jizz whalers. So, <laughs> um, for me, the sequel trilogy, Force Awakens, oh, after I saw Force Awakens, I was disappointed because I was like, hmm. I, 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 it was, it, to me, it felt like a new hope redone. And I was really upset about it. But I didn't like go on the internet and start freaking out and say that my life was ruined and I needed to go to therapy. But um, which I've seen. No, no, no. I have like to. That. I have to. Um, so, um, but then I saw Last Jedi and I was like, my response was, "Huh," and then it grew on me. And then I saw Rise of Skywalker and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" 
So yeah, I, mean, I, I yeah, wish I was there. I wish I was there, but I, I yeah. got better. No, I'm, I'm glad that you feel that way because uh, I wasn't there with it. I mean, I, I, you can say that out of the trilogy, the one that's objectively the best is the Ryan Johnson film. Yeah. But cinema wise, cinema wise, right? cinema wise, but it, it doesn't fit within this trilogy though. Uh, and, and that's, and that's that a problem. Somewhere that's, else. that's a problem. Yeah. I mean, that belongs with another, another it, IP. I think part of the problem another. a lot of people have with it is it takes place almost instantaneously after right. the last one. Right. And right. there's no time elapse. There's no other development area. And that was a, that was a, that was a bold choice to go immediately into it. Has for the rest of it, we're watching. I mean, if you, if you view episode seven and episode eight has almost the exact same sequence of events because nine has a time leap in between it. Uh, you, you, we're watching just a series of events that happened to these characters inside a matter of a day or two days with episode eight that takes place right after the last movie we've seen. There's no time to stop and reconcile anything one of the things that i did not like about eight is we we didn't see the funeral we didn't see the memorial for han and everybody that well, they, they didn't lost. have time they had to evacuate exactly exactly as part of the storyline and move on now in the novelization there was a brief memorial where because they, didn't, uh, they, know, because they did the novelization they yeah. didn't know that in 10 minutes they were going to have to bail out because uh, they didn't know what was going to oh, happen no they knew eight. they knew it was coming they knew it was coming it's the same thing but they didn't take and the author did two or three days you know or anything like that but uh yeah. I, th I think that's a lot of people's problem with uh episode uh the difference between episode seven and episode eight I well, no it, it's just that it, it's, really it's totally completely different because you've got two two different directors with completely different visions of star wars and, you know, and kershner and mark J hand are the same guys no no, no but just, they didn't undermine I'm, they didn't undermine characters they didn't ruin right. any characters did from this. four to five uh, or in seven to eight they did okay they mm -hmm. we didn't nobody got the loop that they wanted Right. Uh, nobody <laughs> got the Luke that no, seems to I have got, fit I, with it. They didn't. It, that Luke does not fit with his established personality. The man who uh, uh, oh went to the God. ends of the galaxy to try to save his the uh, constant his father, whiner, the but, one that pops uh, that lightsaber but out, wanted to kill his nephew because he had a bad dream. Okay, that does those that doesn't mesh. All right. He they didn't kill his the, nephew. The I know. He had a reaction, a it. stout reaction to a, a vibration in the force of what his nephew was going to become. It speaks to his character that all he did was ignite the lightsaber and withheld from himself because the old Luke, the old yeah, Luke would have went ahead, popped the lightsaber, killed the kid and moved on. Yeah, he's a man. It's um, always Luke that lights the lightsaber. This was all about Luke's character development. And it's a character flaw that he retreated to opt to. But hey, he Marie, thought he was doing the right thing. Reason. You happen to be a, one of these Raylo people. How would you feel about that? Not, I mean, I, I don't care either way. Okay. Uh, I thought that would, I mean, did that seem, that seemed stupid. Did it? Like, I mean, like that. Well, it was, there. But, but Red, it was a kiss of gratitude. A kiss of gratitude, they said. It seemed mm -hmm. sweet. It yeah, didn't it a, seem overly romantic. It, it seemed that yeah, these there two wasn't individuals any. had this connection that neither of them understood and now it's cost one of them their lives. Yeah, it was just, it's just a kiss of gratitude. It's this just, is the whole thing. It's normal. This is an epic tragedy in, uh, so far as the storytelling goes. It is a tragedy. I think it's I a will success. Agree. I'll give you that. See, I think it's a Travesty. success. I think it's a success so far as the overall Star Wars art go. But this, this is a tragedy because in the end, it's Palpatine's bloodline that's still there. Skywalker's yeah, and solos have been yeah. removed. She took and, the name of somebody she barely knew. The hope she should have taken Organa if anything. The hope comes solo. from the choice Ray makes at the very end. I know and the uh, proclamation of her name is Skywalker. I know Anakin appreciates having his having his lightsaber buried in sand. He was a big fan <laughs> of the sand. I know. At, at that point, it was uh, Leia. Leia. Leia's lightsaber buried there. Uh, she had a great experience on Tatooine, didn't she? And she was forced <laughs> into basically sex slavery. It was the oh, connection yeah. a, to where what a way to honor her. Started. Started. Good job, Ray. Now look, if you've got a problem with Return of the Jedi mm -hmm. and Empire Strikes Back, we yeah. can do that too. I do. 
these movies are so bad they've, they've retroactively made all the other movies terrible uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, well there we are we're in to uh right up on three minutes uh once again uh, michael nip tell them what to where to find you you can find me at the deucecast um deucecast.com is the easiest place to go there's uh, about 10 years of episodes uh on there um just exploring you know just movie dumb and and fandom in general and we have a really good time on the show and then occasionally i'm on um cti with with rhett uh and, and and tommy in the chat here and we um have a different type of good time in that <laughs> in that particular <laughs> podcast <laughs> Marie? Way to put it. <laughs> um, you can find my Star Wars print media and TV show review blog at the Star Wars Um, I am a monthly co-host on the Tumbling Saber podcast where we talk about books and comics of Star Wars. And I'm on Twitter at Alia Morgane. Uh Rip? Uh yeah, I um I run a support group for people who uh, have seen the rise of Skywalker and then uh, have retreated to their homes and they can't go out anymore uh, because they just have no more reason to live. And uh, I'm just trying to, you know, you try to connect with them on a personal level and you say, listen, I know I've been where you are right now. I understand. And you just talk to them about the, the many plot points uh, that are garbage, the plot holes and the contrivances, and it makes them feel better about where they stand. And eventually Got it. after Literally. some years, they're able to go back out into the world. I'm Stan Daniel. I co-host a podcast with Albert Marsh called Kingdom Casts. And if you think Rhett's problematic, listen to Albert. Uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, Kingdom Comics, or Kingdom Casts, and Twitter. And again, thank you to Kristen and the Hoover Library. And yeah. this has been extraordinary. Yeah, thank you. We uh, uh, we really really enjoyed this and doing this with y'all. Thank you. Thank y'all so thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm off to Picard panel now to watch Mark Adams' blood pressure rise. Oh, I might need to watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be much nicer than I was. <laughs> I hope so. You're basically the. So you're so wait you're the you're the ret to Mark Adams' stand. That's oh, what you have. Right. <laughs> you have you have you have no idea i was not i i did not want them i you see i went into it because anderson's in there mark adams in there and i thought it, they're much more dangerous combined than you are mostly anderson and <laughs> i went in there thinking don't give them an edge and instead mark adams never ever talking to me again <laughs> oh well that's fun times <laughs> all right bye everybody all right, bye, bye guys <laughs>